Okay, folks, we're going to be starting. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Unity of Chattanooga. Ah, God is already here. Can you feel the presence? God's already here. Have an open heart. Be ready to receive and love. Rise from within. God's already here. Have an open heart. Be ready to receive it. Love will rise from within. Oh, God is already here. Can't you feel the presence? God's already here. Have an open heart. Be ready to from within and love will rise from within oh love will rise from within let's sing together surely the presence of the Lord is in this place I can feel God's grace, there's a holy hush around us, I see love on every face, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is right here and right now. And as we often say, as we open our hearts and as we open our minds, God is here. And as we take a deep breath, as we open our hearts, as we open our minds, as we simply relax into this beautiful sunny day, we can feel a guidance a support, a loving presence, slowly flowing through every part of our body, relaxing, revitalizing, bringing a loving energy to our thoughts and to our emotions. And so we give thanks. Thanks for our families, for our friends, for this opportunity to be together and for God's presence right here and right now. And so it is. of a 
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Well, welcome to uh, Unity of Chattanooga Sunday Celebration Service. It's so great to see everybody here. Your bright, smiling faces. It's just, uh, it's just amazing from this viewpoint to see everybody. Everybody should come up here and do this at least once, I think. I uh, also want to welcome all those who are joining us on Facebook. Whether you show up in person or online, we're all connected in the oneness of the divine, right? Um, Please let us know that uh, you're there on Facebook. Drop us a comment and share with anybody that you think will uh, benefit from, from today's service. Um, today, I want to thank uh, Landis. Well, thank you. You always nail it, Landis. Thank you so much. We got a wonderful Landis room. is our minister of music, and we appreciate him so much. I also want to uh, thank Reverend Doug. He'll be bringing the message today. Uh, he's going to give us a talk about how to uh, how we'll be weathering the storms in all our lives. So, uh, I also want to take just a second and uh, thank Miss Penny. Miss mm -hmm. Penny's uh, such an integral part part of our church. She's our church administrator, our, our church chef. She she does she wears so many hats around here, and uh, I just want to just want to acknowledge that and say thank you, Miss yeah. Penny, for all that you do for us. So do we have anybody here for the first time today? Any newcomers? So we have someone here who has not been here. I don't know, maybe eight, nine years or so. So um, welcome to the church. Our name is Jones, and I'd like to have you send him a blessing. Hey. We're honored to have you, Mr. Jones. Thank you for coming today. I said we're honored to have you. Thank you for coming today. We appreciate you coming back. And we have a special welcome for you from our hearts to yours. We love you. We, love we bless you. you. We appreciate you. And we, we behold the Christ in you. you. And the Christ in you is that divine presence that Jesus manifested and demonstrated so perfectly. Welcome. Here at uh, Unity of Chattanooga, we're blessed uh, by all the individual expressions of God that come through this door. Uh, we come together in our core values of love and diversity and inclusion, and we welcome all people wherever they are on their spiritual journey because we are here to work together and live our best lives in the truth that we know. We believe that there is one power and one presence in our lives, whatever name you give it, Brahma, Allah, universe, we refer to it as God here at, uh, at Unity, and um, this is the power and the presence that resides in each individual, and we want to acknowledge that in every person that we come in contact with. We provide an uplifting, inspirational message, message excuse me, to support you on your personal spiritual path. And we hope that you'll find something in today's service that inspires you and motivates you to step into the next version of your best self. And if you guys have been uh, paying attention to your calendar, you know that tomorrow is 9-11, September 11th. Um, you know, that's a day that really changed us all, you know, in our collective consciousness. Um, it's a day that will be etched in our memories forever. And while we can't reverse those tragedies that took place at the Pentagon and Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and the Trade Center, we can't choose to focus on the goodness that came out of that tragedy. It was by far one of the worst days we've seen, but it brought out the best in so many people. And if we learn nothing else from this tragedy, you know, we'll learn that life is precious. And it can be gone in an instant. We're not, we're not guaranteed the next day. So there's no time for hate or animosity. So this is the perfect time in our service to share love and respect with each other. If you'll stand and greet your neighbor with a fist bump or a handshake or a hug.
and flows of angel hair ice cream castles in the air feather canyons everywhere I've looked at clouds that way but now they only block the sun they rain snow on everyone so many things I would have done but clouds got in my way I've looked at clouds from both sides now from up and down and still somehow it's cloud illusions I recall Really don't know clouds at all Moons and tunes, Ferris wheels The dizzy dancing Where you feel as every Fairy tale comes real. I've looked at love that way, and now it's just another show. You leave, I'm laughing when you go, and if you care, don't let them know, don't give yourself away. From give and take And still somehow It's love's illusions 
Something's gained in living, in living every day. It's life's illusions that I recall I really don't know life at all I really don't know life Collins would be proud. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Joni so, Mitchell, too. Yeah, Joni Mitchell actually wrote that song. Yeah. Natalie Cole, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so many. I'm feeling proud. All right, yay! <laughs> and, and it's perfect. I love yeah. it. It's perfect for what we're going to talk about today. Wow. You know? Tears and fears and feeling proud. Yeah. Say, I love you. Right out, out loud. loud, yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. And so many things I would have done, but clouds got in my way. way. Well, that's what we're going to talk about this morning. I get out of the way. I yeah. better get out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in the in the last the last line, I really don't know life at all. It's it's it's. So how do we manage? How do we thrive? How do we grow with with all the clouds and all the dissonance and stuff? Well, that's what we're going to talk about a little bit. The book of Romans, found in the New Testament, is attributed to the Apostle Paul, the great Christian evangelist who was converted on the road to Damascus by a vision from Jesus and afterwards went around the, the ancient world preaching his understanding of Jesus' message to Jews, Gentiles, and pagans alike. He repeatedly gave encouragement and strength to the emerging Christian churches of the day and many times was run out of town and threatened with bodily harm. By all accounts, it was a tough life with drama and challenge. And yet he demonstrated great inspiration, outer courage, and faith in spite of it all. His efforts were largely responsible for the spread of Christianity and its popularity today, and his letters form much of the New Testament. But he had his inner struggles. In the seventh chapter of Romans, we read this, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not 
do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me. That is my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. It continues. (laughs) So I find it to be that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members, wretched man that I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In some ways, when I read this text, it's like fingernails on the chalkboard. You know, it's filled with evangelical rhetoric, reminiscent of fire and brimstone, sin and salvation, and sermons and judgments from earlier churches. But on another level, if we can get through that, What Paul is experiencing is the dissonance, the inner struggles, the confusion that many of us experience on the spiritual path. On Sunday, we hear a positive message of God working for good in our life with inspirations, with guidance, with love, with healing. And yet come Monday morning, we face the challenges of yet another day in a world filled with with much of the opposite. How are we to manage, thrive and grow in such diverse surroundings, such diverse messages, such divergent pushes and pulls? We've had great visions. We've had emotional highs and aspirations that we've had for our life, only to dissipate in clouds and storms and confusion and poor choices. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it, as Paul lamented. We love our spouse, and we just had a big fight. We don't like our job, but we show up every day for work anyway, afraid to make a change. It's Judy Collins' song, Collins' song of life experience that we just heard. So many things I would have done, but clouds got in my way. Most of you are familiar with Mother Teresa, the great Roman Catholic nun who founded missions of charity in Calcutta, India to assist the poor and the sick. It's grown to have over 4,500 nuns across 133 countries as of 2012, over 10 years ago. Today they manage homes for people who are dying of HIV and AIDS, leprosy, tuberculosis, and a host of other diseases. They also run soup kitchens, dispensaries, mobile clinics, children and family counseling centers, as well as orphanages and schools. In retrospect, as we think of Mother Teresa, it seems as if she was divinely guided and assisted to do these these great works, an avatar who came just for that. Early in her life, she became fascinated by stories of the lives of missionaries and their service, and by age 12, she was convinced that she should commit herself to a religious life. Now, she was a native Albanian, and she joined the Sisters of Loretto in Ireland in order to learn English with the intent of becoming a missionary. She chose to be named after Therese de Lasso, if I pronounce that right, a patron saint of missionaries, but opted for the Spanish spelling of Teresa. She moved to a convent in Darjeeling, India, but became increasingly disturbed by the poverty in nearby Calcutta. 
And on a train ride from Calcutta back to the convent in Darjeeling, she heard the voice of Jesus tell her to leave the convent and help the poor while living among them. Will you deny me? were his final words to her. Starting with nothing but that vision, the rest is history. Filled with immense challenges and political and social criticism, yet doors opened at every opportunity. She received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1979. But what many of us don't know is that throughout her life, after that train ride, she experienced a loneliness and a depression and a struggle in her religious beliefs which lasted the next 50 years, confiding to only her counselor and a few others she wrote. Where's my faith? Even deep down there is nothing but emptiness and darkness. If there be God, please forgive me. When I try to raise my thoughts to heaven, there is such convicting emptiness that those very thoughts return like sharp knives and hurt my very soul. In a letter to a spiritual confidant, Michael Vanderpeach, he writes, Jesus has a great special love for you. But as for me, the silence and the emptiness is so great that I look and do not see, listen and do not hear. The tongue moves in prayer but does not speak. I want you to pray for me that I let him have a free hand through me. Pope John Paul II said, where did Mother Teresa find the strength and the perseverance to place herself completely at the service to others? She found it in prayer and in the silent contemplation of Jesus Christ, his sacred heart. Pope Benedict XVI mentions her life and states, In the example of Blessed Teresa of Calcutta, we have a clear illustration. The time devoted to God and prayer not only does not detract from effective and loving service to our neighbor, but is, in fact, the inexhaustible source of that service. She wrote in another letter, it's only by mental prayer and spiritual reading that we can cultivate this gift, this gift of prayer. So why do I, why do I mention her this morning? Because we see in her an example that at an early age, she felt an inspiration and vision for her life to be a missionary. And without any other worldly visions or spiritual guidance, as far as we know, took it upon herself to pursue that vision. Only after considerable dedication and work did she hear Jesus' voice, and then only once, and it changed her life. After that, amidst challenges and difficulties, opportunities presented themselves. Doors began to open. And the work she dedicated herself to grew and prospered. Throughout her life of service, she longed to once again hear the voice of God or Jesus, but never did. It was her dedication to her spiritual practice which facilitated the help from unseen hands the gentle nudging thoughts which we often mistake for our own and the opportunities for her own personal growth as well as those for the world. In the end, she became the saint that she longed so much to hear and be with. Once again, from Paul's writings in Romans the Spirit of God dwells within you. Those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. So how do we do that? Well, again, Paul writes in Romans, Do not be conformed to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The spiritual journey is not an easy one. It's filled with all kinds of physical, material, and worldly temptations, with only a spark of something greater deep within our consciousness. It's up to us to nourish that ember, to bring it into full flame. And the only way to do it is to consciously choose our intentions, our thoughts, our works, and our spiritual practice. From the song, Both Sides, now that we heard this morning, something is lost and something is gained every day. It's important to make that work for you. And all along the journey, there are conflicting thoughts with every emotional tone, pulling and pushing in multiple directions. And yet, as spiritual beings with free will, it's our choice which ones run through our minds and our actions. How we consistently choose time after time is the, is the destiny of our life. And sometimes... It's very hard to do. When I think of some of the great leaders in, in history, each one of them had a greater vision that they never abandoned, even in the face of great difficulty. Washington, Lincoln, FDR, Martin Luther King, Jr., Gandhi, they never wavered. Even if they had private doubts and reservations or lack of enthusiasm or were in jail, they had the discipline to persevere. They had an inner strength, an inner connection to something greater. Something greater that they knew and that they relied on. In the 16th chapter of John, when Jesus is talking to his disciples about the upcoming events in his ministry, he says to them, The hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered each one to his home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have said this to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will face tribulations, but take courage. I have overcome the world. As many of you know, I've had a spiritual pull in my life from very, very early age, often, <laughs> very often it seems, with conflicting twists and turns. When Penny and I were married in, in the late 70s, we decided to join a church and after a considerable search and coincidentally hearing a radio spot for a unity church, we just, <laughs> what a coincidence, <laughs> we found unity. And for the next 20 years, we attended a variety of unity churches, off and on while we raised our daughter and I pursued a business career that moved us all over the country. We became familiar with the, with the basics of prayer, meditation, and an understanding of the laws of mind action and attraction. But in the mid-90s, while trying to avoid church... <laughs> And kayaking a river in Northern California, a voice within said that there were other things that I should be doing and ended my kayaking days with an injury a few moments later. Well, a few weeks later, after the shoulder surgery, that same small voice said to go to the Unity go to the Unity Church in town. And by that time, I recognized that voice and knew that it was a direction or a suggestion not to be taken lightly. <laughs> the minister of that at that time, wonderful guy, just, just got out of ministerial school, and he reignited my spiritual journey. I became very involved with our church in California, and I began to understand, I began to, to feel and, and know, to some degree anyway, 
the subtle higher thoughts of spirit. What thoughts were mine and what thoughts were coming from a powerful but benevolent outside source? What doors spirit was opening and directing and what was mine to do if I chose to do it? By the time I entered ministerial school in the early 2000s, this higher guidance was regular and almost conversational, as was my prayer and meditation practice. Doors not only opened, but flew off the hinges, and directing and assisting events occurred so regularly, time after time, that I could only describe them as, as miracles, although I knew at a deeper level it was help from unseen guiding hands. But as ministerial school developed with the academic work and the variety of other activities, include working in silent unity and speaking on Sunday in a local church, that guidance stopped. It was as if a plug got pulled, somebody turned the switch off. It was not only unnerving, but lonely, scary. And the very experience of silence and emptiness that Mother Teresa described. Doubt and depression became ever-present wolves at the door. Now in those days all ministerial students were directed and encouraged to seek and engage in psychological counseling on a regular basis at least once a month. And the school had a list of licensed uh, therapists and family psychologists that they recommended. Now, I'd never been to a counselor before, had always felt self-assured and confident to make my own decisions, even in difficult situations, and didn't much like the idea. After all, guys are taught to be tough at an early age and not talk about their inner feelings. But after talking with some of my colleagues, I decided to go anyway. I really didn't know what to say. The conversation started slowly and awkwardly, but he was familiar with unity in the ministerial program. <laughs> God bless him. <laughs> he listened carefully and was able to see that there was something under the surface bothering me that I probably wouldn't bring up on my own. So he hit it right on the head. What's bothering you? What is it that you're reluctant to talk about. Well, the horse was out of the barn. So I told him all about the guidance and the events that had led me to unity and the miracles surrounding my entry into ministerial school, the conversations with God and the guidance and direction that was so regular, and now nothing. Am I in the right place? Did I screw something up? Why have I been abandoned? Or has all this been some schizo-imagination? <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, how can you ever doubt? Don't you see that Spirit has assisted you to bring you to where you've always wanted to be? And now it's up to you. Spirit wants you to develop and bring forth your higher self, which you're now in the perfect position to do. You've made the team. Spirit does not want a robot or a, co a codependent relationship, but a brother in kind, which only you can now bring forth. The training wheels are off. It's your time to take the next step and to step up. You wouldn't be here if there was the least doubt on, sp on Spirit's part. Well, he made a lot of sense. I felt better. And I felt an enthusiasm and a reassurance to continue not only my spiritual practice, but the ministerial training, and to candidate after that. Uh, to become a unity minister. And quite frankly, that's why I'm here this morning, today. As human beings with creative ability, 
and minds that cannot only think but receive clairvoyantly. There is an abundance of thoughts and emotions that we are privy to each moment. With a firm foundation and spiritual orientation, we can choose wisely. We can weather the storms and rainy days that we've been told are bound to occur and that many on the spiritual path can attest to. But sometimes there are traumatic events that occur that seem devastating beyond the cloudy days and doubts and misgivings and yet in hindsight have been for us. Some of you might know Darlene Strickland. Yes? No? Darlene was the music director of a large evangelical charismatic Pentecostal church in North Carolina. Her faith was deep, and she loved the praise and worship music she helped bring and orchestrate every Sunday. But in her private life, she felt unfulfilled in her 10-year marriage. In prayer and in contemplation, she realized that she was gay and quietly divorced her loving and supportive husband without incident. There were some rumblings in the church about her divorce, since divorce was against their teachings. But times being what they were, she was accepted without judgment as an unfortunate aspect of life in today's world. We're just going to overlook that. But when she later appeared in church with a female partner, she was unceremoniously thrown out without remorse. As you can imagine, she was devastated. Her faith world was shattered, and she was inconsolable. But her prayer life continued. She asked for guidance. And a few weeks later, a friend, a friend invited her to a Unity Church, which she reluctantly <laughs> agreed to attend. At least once. Well, her life changed with that first service. She felt accepted for who she was and found a teaching and a way of life that she not only embraced but felt called to carry forward. We sat side by side all through ministerial school. We co-ministered a small nearby church on Sundays together and are good friends today. She is currently the minister of Unity of Blue Ridge near Asheville, North Carolina. And when she first arrived, the church was run down and needed substantial maintenance upgrades, as well as suffering from a dwindling congregation and supporting funds. But she went to work, brought in vestiges of the lively, uplifting praise and worship music that she knew so well, and outreach programs in the community. Today, it's a, it's a large, well-furnished church with a profound unity message and great music, one of the largest in the area, and one of the larger unity churches in the country. You need to get there early to get a good seat. It's one of those places and one of those services that leave you feeling pretty good about yourself. And I'd recommend that you stop in if you're in the area. So for today, remember that Paul was well educated in his faith and served as a Pharisee in his Hebrew tradition. It was his tenacious faith that, re, that Jesus noticed and redirected and used to spread his message that formed the foundation of Christianity today. And yet, with all of that, Paul had his struggles, his inner struggles. Mother Teresa heard the call to serve early in life, followed the path available to her in her Catholic faith, and received a direction and a commission that changed the world. And yet she too struggled, felt abandoned and alone. 
Darlene's faith was strong, yet she went through a very difficult redirection. And she now serves a like-minded community of progressive and inclusive people embracing their spiritual journey. And I'm sure she feels pretty good about what she's doing, although I'm sure she has her challenges. And then for, and as for me, well, I heard the call early. I began to embrace a spiritual life, but drifted away with materialistic desires and had to be, had to be brought back with a, with a relatively stern lesson. And even when that faith was reignited, and doors opened miraculously, there were still doubts that needed reassurance. And today I can speak confidently about a loving and guiding spirit that I have experienced and I know to be true. And I can talk about the spiritual work that needs to be done to achieve and sustain it. The point of today's message is that a strong faith and connection to God will help you not only weather the trials and tribulations of life, but bring you to a place of being on purpose with your life, loving God and loving your neighbor in service to others. Beyond, perhaps, your own ability to do so. But you have to put down roots you have to do the initial work. You, you have to prepare that foundation. And once you do, Spirit will open doors of service and insight and opportunity that will change you at depth and bring hope to many others. There will be clouds. There will be rainy and stormy days. But your faith will be able to withstand them. And you will grow. You will thrive. And you will prosper. I'd like to quote, close this morning with a quote from the Dalai Lama. He says, A tree with strong roots can withstand the most violent storm, but the tree can't grow roots just as the storm appears on the horizon. Grasshopper. (laughs) So let's take a few moments and uh, just let all that settle. I know it was a lot. You ought to try writing one of those sermons. So much is left on the cutting table. But for right now, take a deep breath and let it go. Relax your body, starting at the top of your head. If there's any stress or any tension, just notice it. Thank it for being there. Let it go. Go down across your shoulders and through your arms, through your chest and through your abdomen. If there's any stress, if there's any tightness, just let that go. And let God's energy flow down through your hips and your legs, your feet, and down deep into the earth, into Mother Earth, Gaia, a planet alive and supporting life of every kind healing and let that energy flow back up through your body, through your legs your hips through your abdomen, your chest and just feel the nurturing of that energy flowing back out to Mother, Father, God you are connected with a source of spiritual an earthly energy that supports life on every dimension. And as we think of this living planet, there is sunshine, there is warmth, there is 
abundance and growth everywhere. And yet there are clouds and storms and earthquakes. There are deserts. There are cold places. And yet life is there. And so right here and right now, I want you to think of a challenge that's in your life. A cloud that has drifted your way. Blocking the sun. It may be a time to step back. Maybe a time to simply be open to change. It may be like Paul and Mother Teresa, Darlene and me. It may be Spirit saying, there's something else for you to do. This is all good. You've done well. You're loved and guided. And this is a new door for your good and for the good of the planet. Something that you and only you can do. Think about these things. And remember that clouds bring rain. Rain brings nourishment through which all things grow. And with the rain and the sunshine and with the seasons, with the tides, all things are working together for good. All things. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this day, for this hour, for our friends. So it is. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the time in our service when we, when we choose to give back, when we choose to feel a prosperity and an abundance that we wish to share. So I'd invite you now to take your tithes and your offerings in your hand and just hold them in your hands for just a moment. And think of all the blessings in your life. All that abundance that has allowed you to, to be here, to share, to have family and friends. And so, repeat and join with me our offering statement. Together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I give in love, and I receive in abundance. Money is coming to me easily and endlessly. Money is coming to me. Money is coming to me easily and endlessly. Money is coming to me. Money is coming to me.
coming to me right here and yeah. right now. Yeah, absolutely. So we give thanks once again for these tithes and these offerings so freely given from hearts filled and overflowing with abundance. And we know that these, these special gifts go forward to bless each and every one of us and through us to bless our friends, our associates, this town, this country, and this world. It starts right here with us. Thank you, God. And so it is. All right, you guys hold up. We got some announcements. All right. Um, thank you, Reverend Doug. That was that was good. We are all blessed that you answered the call. Yeah. yeah. Woo. All right. So what's happening here at Unity? Uh, Unity's thirtieth annual Word World Day of Prayer is this week on September 13th and 14th. It's a time that unites thousands of people all over the globe in the power and the power of affirmative prayer. The theme this year is a heart of healing, and it's an opportunity to join the hearts and minds of people from all around the globe as we affirm together, I open my heart to healing in this moment. You can join uh, Unity Worldwide Ministries on Zoom for the opening ceremonies. That's on Wednesday, September 13th at 7 p.m. Uh, Central Time for prayer, music, and contemplation. There's also uh, more events on September 14th. Just Google uh, Unity World Day of Prayer uh, 2023 to register. And this event is free, and all you need is your email address. So uh, every Sunday morning uh, at 10.30, Laura Noyes presents Moving with the Spirit. It's truly an inspirational time of uh, lending your body, leading your body gently uh, into movements to reclaim your sense of peace. And it's, it's really relaxing and, and a lot of fun. Thank you, Laura, for doing that. We appreciate you. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to belong to a friendly, energetic, spiritual community and a place that encourages you to learn and grow spiritually, we invite you to join Unity of Chattanooga and by becoming a member. Uh, some common responses that we hear from newcomers is that uh, the energy feels so loving and the message is empowering. And, you know, you feel like you found a home here. I certainly did, you know. Um, you, this is my family now, so yeah. I really appreciate all you guys. Um, we trust that God is always guiding your heart to a greater awareness of your potential and goodness. And you can sign up if you want to learn more. If you, you can sign up if you just want to learn more about unity and the unity movement. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the back. And uh, who doesn't want to hang out with this? Huh? <laughs> okay. And um, right now we want to bring Amanda up. She's got some announcements for us. <laughs> 